What's up Final Cut Pro help viewers? My name is Jared and I want to bring to you another tip and this is for all of you social media posters, specifically for Instagram. I've been receiving many questions around the videos that people have been posting from Final Cut onto Instagram and they usually are around the quality of the video. They see really good video inside of Final Cut when they're watching it, but when they share the file from their computer onto their phones to then post through Instagram, on Instagram the video is lower quality, doesn't look that good. I've even had people who have stopped posting to Instagram because the quality is so low. And that's something that just shouldn't be a thing because Instagram, if you have spent any time on it, you've seen video and usually the videos look really good on Instagram. And that's because uh, Instagram has a few requirements, but usually they're able to handle video up to 10, 1080p uh, video. As far as resolution, the, the maximum that I've seen on there, at least right now, is 1080. So you should be able to get a large quality file onto Instagram. And I'm going to show you the steps that I use to post videos from Final Cut to Instagram and hopefully clear up some of the confusion. The first thing that I will recommend doing, because uh, you're going to be watching this in the future, is this video is being recorded in late 2018, and Instagram may have changed things. So go on to help.instagram.com and just do a search for video, or in this case I did video requirements. And they didn't have an article dedicated to Instagram, but they do have one here for IGTV. And I think they had one for Instagram in the past, I don't know where it went. But in the articles, they usually talk about a couple things that you want to keep in mind. The first is the type of file that you're going to want to use. And in this case, it's an MP4. And the video resolution, they want it to be a minimum resolution of 720 pixels. And we're going to use 1080, but just keep that in mind that they may change this so that you have to share and send out larger quality videos. The other thing we want to look at is the maximum file size. And for IGTV, they let you do 10 or sometimes up to 60 minutes of content. So they have the uh, file size limit here of 650 megabytes for 10 minutes of content. So in our case, we're posting to Instagram and their limit right now is 60 seconds of video you can post on Instagram. And I, I don't remember the exact size limit that they had, but I want to say it was around 300 megabytes or so. So we need to, to stay under that, and we want to get a smaller size out that fits inside of this, but we want our frame size to be larger, because that's going to keep our quality up. So let's go back to Final Cut, and I'll show you the steps I use. First, I'm going to hide the browser and the inspector using those two buttons at the top uh, right, because we just don't need those areas of Final Cut. And then I have my video here. I can go to the end of it. And if I move my playhead to the end, I see this video is 58 seconds and 11 frames. So it's less than the 60 second limit that's right now on Instagram videos. So we're good there. I'm um, then I'm gonna go up here to the share menu. And what I recommend sharing these videos out, because I've seen people go through and use like Apple devices and some of these other ones, but share it as a master file. That's my recommendation. And so click on master file the first tab that we see here in the share window is the info tab. And I always recommend going in here and make sure that you name these clips. So like this Final Cut Pro Help video, maybe I shared it to YouTube before, but now I'm doing it to Instagram. So I'm going to say Final Cut Pro Help for Instagram. That way I know what this video is. Uh, it's about Final Cut Pro Help and it's for Instagram. So just name your files. It takes two seconds and these files are going to be stored all over your computer and you're going to have a lot of them in the future as you continue to share and if you're not naming them it's going to be very confusing later on when you go to try and organize them to figure out which ones can you delete which can you save just take those couple seconds to name your files please and so the next thing that we're going to look at is at the bottom we can see that we're sharing as a 1920 by 1080 uh, resolution or frame size project and that's great. That's what I recommend doing because the, at least as of right now, the largest size or frame size you can have is 1080. So you could share a square video, and I've posted this in other videos, as 1080 by 1080 if you want a square video. But in our case, we want a widescreen. We want to see the entire video. So we're going to share it as 1920 by 1080. 
It is going to shrink this uh, width down to 1080, but we're going to share it as this size so we get the better quality over to Instagram. And then all the way on the right side, we do want to be concerned about our estimated file size. This is 900 megabytes, and I've had issues with files that size. And because I think there is still a limit on the sharing of video, I couldn't find it on Instagram's page, but I'm sure it's there somewhere. And I believe it's around 300 megabytes or so. So to get this to be smaller, we're going to go up to settings. And under the settings, we want to change the video codec. We do want format to be video and audio, because we want both of those. But our codec, Apple ProRes is great, but I'm actually going to change this to H.264. H.264 is a compression. It's going to make the file size much smaller. So watch, when we change this, notice our estimated size went from 900 megabytes down to 141 as the estimated file size. So much, much smaller file by using the H.264 uh, compression or video codec. And that's what I'd recommend doing. We still keep our resolution of 1920 by 1080 and everything else stays the same. Um, I don't need chapter markers and I don't want it to open with QuickTime. So I'm just gonna change those so that it doesn't do those steps afterwards. Cool. So just to summarize, we did share as master file. We adjusted our name under the info settings. And then under the settings tab, we changed the video codec from whatever it was, in our case, it was the Apple ProRes, to H.264. Then we also uncheck this stuff, but you don't need to do that step. All right, cool. So that's all you have to do in Final Cut. Then we're going to hit Next, and we're going to save this on the desktop. If you have another way of saving and organizing your content, you can save it wherever you want. But I'm saving it onto the desktop. And at the top left, you have your background tasks window. You can click on this if you want to to see this sharing happening uh, as it goes. It usually happens pretty quickly because this video is less than 60 seconds, but if you want to monitor it, you can do that there. Cool. So now we have shared it to desktop. It looks great. I am going to now go onto my phone because I need to get this video over to my phone, and we're going to go through those steps to get it there. So to do this, I'm done with Final Cut, so I'm just going to do Command-H to hide Final Cut. I'm going to do Command-H here on Safari to hide Safari. And I'm going to bring over QuickTime because I actually have my phone right here so we can see what's happening on the phone itself. So on the file that's on the desktop or wherever you shared it, you need to drag this onto your phone. You need to get it to your phone. And you can do this many different ways. But this is a mistake and one of the, the steps that a lot of people don't do correctly and it causes the video to become very compressed. So you want to make sure that you do this step correctly. And if you have uh, an app like Dropbox or iCloud Drive or another file sharing service, you can certainly go on and save this file to that service and then open that up on your phone through an app like iCloud Drive, like the Files app or the Dropbox app on your phone. And you should be able to save that video and post it from there. However, if you went and tried to email this video to yourself, many email providers compress those videos and you'll lose a lot of quality in emailing it. So maybe don't choose that step. Uh, if you're using another method, awesome, great, but check because if you're still finding you don't get a great quality video over by following my steps here, it could be that service that you're using. So what I recommend doing because this is built into uh, your Mac, your computer here, if you're using one, which if you have Final Cut, that's what you're using. And uh, it's built onto your iPhone as well, if that's what you're using. If you're not using an iPhone, you got to find another service or another way to connect your phone and maybe share it over through a, uh, an external device if, you, if your phone supports that. But in this case, I have an iPhone, so I'm just going to use AirDrop. And what AirDrop is, is a way to wirelessly send those files over by them physically being close to each other. So on the video that's on the desktop, I'm going to control click or right click on that video. I'm going to go down to share. And in my little share sheet here, I can see AirDrop is an option. So I'm going to click on AirDrop. And in the little window that comes up, it shows me the devices that are in proximity. So sitting right next to my computer here is my iPhone. I can see it there. I'm going to hit on Jared's iPhone. And then on the background here, you can see on my phone, it pops up and it says, hey, my iMac here would like to share a video. Do you want to accept it? So on the phone, I'm going to tap on accept. And that's it. Now it's shared that file from the computer 
over to the Photos app on my iPhone. So I'm gonna click Done on the little AirDrop. I'm gonna move this little window right into the corner here. And now I'm going on to my phone. I'm gonna press the Home button to exit out of Photos. And I'm gonna tap on the Instagram app to open Instagram. So here we are, this is the Final Cut Pro Help Instagram feed. Uh, if you're not following, go over to at Final Cut Pro Help and you can follow us. And if I wanna post a video here, I'm gonna go at the bottom center and press the plus button. And it brings up my recent posts, my library, and there's my video. I can press the play button in the middle to play that video. I'm able to see it, awesome, looks great. I'm actually gonna tap the button in the lower left corner to resize it so that we see the full 16 by nine video. We do get the blocks at the top, but that's okay. And then I'm gonna hit next. We can go on here if we wanted to and, and post a filter over it, just like you would with any Instagram post. I'm assuming you know how to do that if you're using Instagram. You can look up other videos to talk about that. But then we're gonna hit next. And you'll notice at the top right, we have our 16 by nine widescreen video. I can tap on the plus to see it. Notice it's just that video. There's not the white bars at the top and the bottom because you can see add location is on there even though it is white on the top and the bottom. Those aren't gonna be included in the video. It'll, it'll crop those out in your post. And that's it. If you, if you look at this video, it's got the quality. Um, I'll try to, let's see if I can make this a little bit bigger on the computer. But the quality is there. We can see all the detail in the egg. There is a little compression because these videos came off the web and were compressed. But they come out looking really nice. If you look on the phone itself, obviously you can't do this. But me looking at the phone, I can still see all the quality, especially here with the rain and the reflections. Uh, that quality is there. The last clip that was included in this video, I think it's after the snow clip, is one that I recorded with my iPhone at 4K resolution of the trees. So that's the one that's gonna look the best. This one has some compression. You can see it in the snow path there. Uh, but let's take a look at this next one because yeah, here we can really see the, the quality that's brought over. The tree, all the details still there. We can see the detail on the walk sign is all here. So this is a way to get a, a quality video over to Instagram when people are scrolling through to watch this. Uh, they're going to see all of that there. So that is how you post a, or you know, take a post, video post from Final Cut and get it over to Instagram for posting and keeping that quality. Yeah, it's the best quality you can get. I hope this uh, step, all these steps made sense, but just to summarize, in Final Cut Pro, you want to export as the master file, keeping the highest resolution of your project. Uh, Instagram, as far as I know, uses 1080 as the max. So if you have a 4K project, you can still share that, but I don't think you'll see the benefits on Instagram. But if you're sharing a 720 or lower resolution, that's where you're gonna lose some of the quality. And then after you share that file out, I would recommend using H.264 as well as the codec. But after you share that file, you wanna use AirDrop or another method to share the full quality video from your computer to your phone. If you're using another service, that could be compressing it and causing issues. And then once you've shared that, just use the native Instagram uh, first party app of, of Instagram to share that post and you should get the best quality uh, posted. So I hope this answered the question. If you have any suggestions or ways to make this process easier for people, please post it in the comments below. Give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see future posts uh, that get posted to this channel. Thanks everyone.